communities. But I met, I met Christopher through my course where I mentor people in their data science careers in, and I started talking to him and he's got a really incredible background. He's actually been studying machine learning and neural networks for a long time, like way before it was cool. He was publishing papers on neural networks at, uh, at Georgia Tech. So he's got a ton of experience, a ton of expertise, you know, specifically in machine learning, neural nets, you know, deep learning, everything. He's, he's really knows what he's talking about. So I'm just super excited for these, for these lectures, for him to be able to teach you and me for us to all learn together. So congratulations on being here. You know, it just shows you dedication. I know that it's like 3, 4 a.m. for a lot of you guys, but he really knows what he's talking about. So pay attention to this. You're going to learn a lot. Make sure to take notes or just note down questions that you have, right? So make sure you're really engaged and paying attention. If you've got questions, type them in the Q&A so, so Christopher is able to address them later. Um, but yeah, I won't talk too much here. I'll let, I'll let Chris take over. Super excited for this. So uh, go ahead. Take it away, my man. I'm, I'm super excited. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Kyle. I love everything you do for this group, for, for data science, for machine learning. Um, you know, this, the, you've changed so many people's lives with your program. So, um, you know, you're, you're the best. Thank you so much for, for uh, that, uh, that shout out and, you know, talking to me. And talking to me about this class, uh, I was going to do this um, anyway, um, just for my company. Um, but uh, but yeah, just broaden the audience. Um, that just makes it you know much much more valuable, much more exciting. So yeah, I'm jazzed. All right, awesome. I'll I'll go ahead and shut my screen off here and let you take it away. All right, sounds good. All right. So we've got 57 people on, got the chat going. Uh, yeah, any questions, post them in the q and I will try to get to them as quickly as I can. Uh, yeah, it looks like got a question that wasn't quite a question, but it's good. Um, okay, so, All right, just closing up that question. All right, so let's uh, let's talk about real quick what we're going to go through tonight. Um, well, first of all, just over in the chat, um, if you guys, you know, as you come on, uh, especially if you only chatted to the panelists, not to panelists and attendees, um, you know, where you're from, um, you know, that would be great. And if you're dialing in at a crazy time, you know, let us know what time that is. Uh, it's always, it's always neat to see that. Kudos to you guys coming on at like 3 a.m. over in those time zones. But, uh, but yeah, so tonight, uh, first thing I'm going to do, talk about is just about my background. Uh, Cal mentioned a little bit about that already. Uh, then I'm going to go through uh, the logistics of this class uh, in terms of what's you know, what I'm going to require from you guys. Uh, and uh, Sonica, you're still talking to just the panelists. Uh, and Shrushti, also just the panelists. Uh, you guys got to switch it. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about what I, what I expect from students. Um, you know, this is going to be an interactive course. It's going to be a very busy course for myself and you guys, uh, not just during this hour, but I'm going to have stuff outside you know, the, uh, the, 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 this, uh, you know, hour, hour and a half, I would say. Um, then I'll talk about the schedule, uh, what, you know, how, how long this class is going to be and everything. Um, and then go, you know, talk about what we're going to talk about in all of the lectures. Um, then I'm going to get into the meat of this um, history of AI. Talk about, you know, where it started how it came to where it is now over you know, the past 50, 60, 70 years. Uh, and then we're gonna talk about you know, what are the latest in AI, what you know, machine learning, you know, deep learning, we're gonna talk about that some. 
uh, what is data science, you know, this new quote field uh, that has arisen that AI is a kind of the, say the basis of, but it's what made it, I would say, jump way out. Um, and uh, then we're gonna break down data science into, you know, all the different disciplines that go into it. And then we're going to touch on the applications in machine learning that are number one, way back when, uh, you know, back, uh, when it was, you know, just called AI. Um, we're gonna talk about that some, and then talk about some of the newest uh, applications, you know, just kind of talk through. And I will be, as I'm going through that, I will talk, I will mention as we go, what we're going to be going through in this class, uh, because there's many uh, applications uh, that are that the code is out there. Uh, it's accessible. Uh, it's it's something you can do yourself. Uh, so, you know, there's going to be some assignments along with that. We'll go through some of the really cool, neat stuff. You know, through in class. Uh, and then, uh, you know, there will be a project at the end. Uh, you know, a couple weeks out from the end that everybody will do their own project whatever is interest to you uh, whether it be some of the projects we talked about uh, we're going to do a proposal and then uh, you you'll develop it and you know we'll, we'll all uh, benefit from from that um, and then uh, i'm going to talk about uh, at the end we're going to jump into machine learning start really you know diving in all the, you know, I'll, I'll give you a high level of what machine learning is is like. Um, one second here, I want to grab my phone so I can keep track of the time. Okay. All right. Um, and then at the very end, uh, we're going to, I'm going to talk about homework. Uh, what What I'm going to expect from you guys between now and uh, next week. And I know there's some people that are, you know, kind of doing this on, you know, on the side. And uh, my expectations, uh, you know, it, it'll it vary. Um, you know, some people that, you know, have lots of time and can do, you know, do much more uh, for this class. Uh, there's some people that, you know, have full-time jobs and really just don't have much time outside uh that so you know just we'll we'll manage it we'll figure it out um so so yeah okay so about me um as if you didn't see enough of a picture of me you know here um that one there uh so my that's my email address uh chris at deeper side of learning dot com uh that's my website um, deepersideoflearning.com. Um, if you haven't been on there already, uh, I started putting that together a few months ago, and uh, you know we'll keep track of everything in this class on there. Uh, I'll be putting links to, you know, the slides, links to the uh, recorded presentations. Uh, you know, for anybody that can't. Uh, make it to, you know, all of the classes. Uh, you you'll be able to go back and check them out. Uh, you know, you can go through it, the, the lecture at, at your, uh, you know, whenever you need to. And you know, there's 160 some people signed up for this class, and I'm seeing, you know, 60 or so that are here. Um, so, yeah, um, a lot of people were like. You know, can I can I just watch this after the class uh, because you know that's kind of a bad time for me, or that particular one I can't make it to. And sure, yeah, um, that's that's of course uh, acceptable. Um, so, uh, so my background, and this will be kind of a repeat, a repeat of a 
uh, interview that uh, Kate did with me uh, night before last uh, for her uh, Humans of Data Science. I strongly suggest you check this out. Uh, you know, I got the website there, um, and you know, links to all this will be available. I'll, I'll post the uh, the slides out there. You can see my uh, uh, my interview there at that. Uh, and uh, basically, I for about 15 minutes, I talk about you know my background. So just real quick, uh, since I was a kid, I've been a programmer. Uh, I, I was about seven years old when I got my first computer, and my parents could not get me away from it. Uh, I was uh, you know I, I basically lived on that. That was my friend more than other people. Uh, you know, that just, uh, it was the very first home computer. You know, this, I'm gonna be dating myself. Uh, it was before the PC came out, uh, before Apple had a computer. So it was a Radio Shack, a Model 1, Level 1, and it was my toy. So all throughout my life, I've been programming. When I was a kid, I programmed a lot of games, a lot of graphics, a lot of, uh, math, mathematics, calculating pi, all that kind of stuff. And uh, just loved it. I mean, I would just stay up all night uh, programming. Uh, and uh, I continue, I, I, and my dad, I mean, the reason why is my dad was a programmer. So I, uh, uh, I got into it. My dad got me into it. I was uh, just a little, little geek uh, when I was a kid. So and I worked for him also, uh, you know, I, I didn't, I, I programmed at the office, but it wasn't his stuff. You know, I did answer the phone and stuff like that. Um, but, um, but yeah, so grew up in that manner and even high school, you know, still programmed, still worked for him, actually started doing business programming. That's what he did, business applications. So um, went to college for electrical engineering, uh, South Florida, and then Georgia Tech, um, and still working for him here and there, uh, and uh, programming. You know, all my classes had to do with programming. Uh, it was electrical engineering and artificial intelligence, um, and also mechanical engineering. But um, and I, I started to get into artificial intelligence then. Uh, into neural networks. This was back when neural networks were not um, were, were not deep. You know, this was back in the early '90s, and uh, they had you know rather limited applications because computers were just not that fast, and people were just not that imaginative yet about their applications. Uh, and uh, I, the, what I, the way I applied it. Uh, since it was electrical engineering, goes in building chips, and I didn't post it here. Um, I will post it later, or maybe add it to this. Uh, but um, my research, uh, it's I, I presented on it. I came out here to San Francisco for the first time and presented at uh, a conference, uh, manufacturing semiconductor manufacturing conference. And um, I, I published like six papers, and they've been referenced 300 times at least since then, and they're still being referenced even this year. So it was it was early work in neural networks. It was there were probably around 20 neurons. It was like one hidden layer, so you could get nonlinearity. Um, and it was a pretty small data set. But my goal was to, and this is kind of part of my bent is, you know, I'm a neural networks guy. I'm not, you know, statistics, you know, I, I like it. I'm liking it more and more as we go along. But my papers were all comparing neural networks to uh, statistical methods. Um, you know, linear regression. So, and neural networks were more accurate, um, even only a few neurons. So the promise for them was huge. And uh, as you can, you know, it, it, as you can see, it, it definitely has panned out. Um, still statistical methods for data science are king. 
I'd have to say. Um, you know, applications are just, you know, they abound in, in statistical methods. You know, the, I see the most complicated models, including like XGBoost or, you know, um, you know, uh, you know that stuff like that, and uh, they don't. People don't go beyond that into neural networks because that just seems like I don't know another another world. Um, but I also see, you know, in the, some of the Kaggle competitions, people going into neural networks using them, and um, haven't quite seen where they've gone from statistical to neural networks yet. I'm sure it's there, just haven't seen it yet, and showing. Uh, you know the comparison so and i you know I'm, I'm working to do that again you know with some of my applications so uh so anyway so that's uh you know back in college that was you know what my research was uh then i only got my master's at georgia tech i did not go on to get my phd uh like all my friends were doing um, I did not come out to California at that time. I, I went back to Florida and went into my, followed my father's footsteps. Since that's really all I knew. Georgia Tech basically showed me what I didn't know about electrical engineering because it was just so hard. Um, and so I kind of took the easy route and got it, went and got a job, started my career in programming and in the, in the older technology uh, in the business world. And that's still where I'm at today. Um, I've grown in my job, uh, been manager, been you know all all different levels, uh, you know in this in that world, uh, and you know I've been just um, I would say seven, you know, maybe six years ago when I moved out here to the Bay Area, I got back into data science because it all of a sudden had become this thing, um, especially in the Bay Area. Um, there were uh, so many uh, meetups. There were a thousand um, uh, you know, small conferences out here. People were just going crazy, you know, webinars like crazy. Uh, you know, the, everybody was, you know, was jumping on this, um, and I was I, I wanted to also. Over the years, you know, as a programmer, programmer analyst, I was still interested in how the brain worked, in all of the uh, different kind of stuff that uh, that was associated with that and artificial intelligence. I still kept my tabs on it. Still tried to learn. I went into business intelligence. Um, that became you know, you know, my niche. Uh, and uh, so, so I just really loved it. Um, and then when I saw it became popular again, I was like, okay, I'm there. I uh, went to, you know, I just, I really became absorbed in it, took lots of classes in it. Um, and, you know, never really pushed to, to jump into, you know, get a role in that. I'm not sure exactly why, but you know, here I am and, you know, I'm, I'm like on the edge at this point. Um, finally, I'm sharing with all of you guys my experience and, you know, this uh, type of uh, technology that I've been learning and, you know, just show, so excited to share it, make it, you know, it's just gone viral, you know, and I, I want, I, I, I want to contribute to that. So, um, and, and besides that, neural networks kind of took a dump uh after not too not too long after i graduated uh kind of went into like a dark ages of of machine learning neural networks and and picked back up in like 2005 when uh cnn's you know became you know sh showed uh, that they were, were really able to to do something you know deep learning grew as a response to big data uh and you know it, it really took off back in like 2012 that's when things just went crazy so and i'll talk more about that as we go along um so i just uh want to give a shout out uh, to kyle and and randy uh 
you know, they're just their their greatest guys, you know, with data science dream job. Um, you know, that's if you guys really are serious about getting into data science, um, I would definitely check that check them out. Um, you know, I, I got involved with them, you know, like a, you know, a month or two ago, and it's just it's really skyrocketing, you know, my career. So hopefully it will yours. Uh, so what do I do in my spare time? Um, I, you know, at, at, up to like a couple of years ago, uh, like 2016, I was an ultra marathon, ultra marathoner, and I did a lot of triathlons. Um, and anybody familiar with ultra marathons, it's running longer than a marathon. I would do about one a month. And at some point, uh, you know, I just, um, I, I, I stepped back, didn't quite have time for it. And now, I mean, I, my hips are, are kind of hurting at this point. I try to get back into running, but it's not there. Um, and, uh, and, you know, Kate's training for her first marathon. And I'm just so amazed at that, you know, anytime, anybody is doing is is doing that it's just like oh you know all my friends are are marathoners you know or triathletes and um you know i my i have so much experience in that i could be i could easily be a coach so uh so what what i've kind of moved into is uh swimming uh i also swim in the bay out here uh you know pool swimming whenever um but that's just my big thing. I like swimming from Alcatraz, doing that kind of work. Um, and uh, and now I've just, you know, in the past year, uh, gotten into underwater hockey, uh, which I showed a little video of that here. And that's kind of illegal, what uh, that girl is doing with her a stick. Can't really reach across like that, but it happens. You know, nobody calls it. But um, you play, basically it's playing hockey at the bottom of a pool uh, and you just stay down as long as you can uh, otherwise somebody everybody else takes the puck but uh it's it's a blast it's the, it's it's a real good really fun sport and it's it's not olympic level but it's uh you know there's a u.s team there's like 25 countries that have teams so definitely check it out youtube it if you're if you're just in in awe of that Anyway, enough about me. Uh, let's uh, move on to the class. So, I love this this little uh, this little uh, graphic here. I'm not going to leave anybody behind. No child left behind. No adult left behind either. Uh, but uh, but yeah, there's some things I'm going to require of you guys. Um, some hoops you'll have to jump through. Uh, basic prerequisites, though, I'm going to, you know, keep those at a minimum. Um, I, you know, my goal here is to, to uh, instruct you guys from almost from scratch. And I'm not complete because I'm going to require, you know, you got to have basic math. Uh, you got a PC, Mac, or Linux box. Um, minimal programming experience, you know, you kind of have to know your way around it a little bit. Um, and, uh, but the biggest thing, you know, is your excitement to learn. You really want to, you really have to want to be in this space. You really have to have the curiosity. Um, that's probably the biggest thing, the big, most important thing for somebody who wants to be in data science, machine learning. Um, it's a very intellectual pursuit. Uh, you know, you want to know why, and that's that's probably the biggest thing I'm going to talk about in this because I'm always I always want to know why for everything, and I'm going to explain it all. I'm going to explain why for everything, uh, not everything, but uh, you know, there's there's tons of models out there, and it's become like a plug and play um, data science. You know, you you, you just you have your data and you plug in the models. Well, that's just not good enough for me. I want to have you guys understand 
uh, the models? Uh, have you understand, uh, you know, where they come from, um, you know, how they work, some of the math, you know, not, not all the math, but at least enough to get you by. Uh, back propagation, you know, we're going to talk a lot about that. Um, it's something that you just gloss over. I mean, in your model, you say fit and you're done. You let the computer do everything because somebody else has done all the math. But I, I, I want people to understand where this stuff comes from. Um, so I talk about it in a very high level sense, just, just so people can understand and know why this model would be better than another one. So it's not just a name that you're plugging in. Uh, even though it's gotten that way, you can just plug this stuff in. It's amazing to me. Um, so the community. Uh, I, this is data science is a very strong community, very large. Uh, if any of you don't have LinkedIn yet, um, probably it's a very small group. Uh, uh, you know, you really got to get that. Um, and we're going to be doing some coding in here. And the way we're going to share our coding is, you know, on GitHub. I can't imagine any better way to do that. Uh, most of you, well, probably half of you probably have GitHub already, maybe more, um, a GitHub account. That's going to be part of the first homework assignment is getting that set up uh, and learning a little, learning basic, the basics of that. Um, I have a uh, spreadsheet um, that I'm going to, I'm going to post it after the class. I'll send it as a follow-up. Um, where I want people to, I want all of us to share with each other. Um, you know, basically, you know, it's a uh, Google, Google Sheet. Um, everybody can maintain their own row and add your LinkedIn, add your GitHub, add if you attended the class. Um, you'll have a couple other questions like where you're from. Because, you know, I want all of us to support each other. Uh, the, the grading for this, you know, I, I, I want people to grade each other's work uh, and, you know, everybody's going to have teammates um, and I'll probably assign that after like the second class. Um, and because uh, I, 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 you know, based on people's levels, I want people to work together. So, um, so yeah, we'll talk about that probably next class. Uh, I just got a question there, and uh, yes, po programming will be in Python. Uh, we'll we'll talk about that by the end of the class. There are other languages that uh, that d data science or machine learning is done in, like R. Um, and I've seen graphics all over the place as far as the size, the number of people doing R versus Python, you know, versus JavaScript versus C plus um, plus. Um, and other areas are growing, like um, JavaScript is growing. Uh, Microsoft is putting tons into this. All the libraries are being created for that, the models. Uh, so, um, but, but in this class, I want things to be done in Python. That's becoming the standard. Not exactly sure why, except it's just a nice programming, it's a nice language to work in. Um, you know, uh, data is very easy to manipulate in Python. It's very easy in R also. I won't say that. Data analysis, you know, it's, R is made for that. Um, but people, you know, at some point, engineers added that kind of stuff to, um, to Python. If it wasn't there from the beginning, I mean, there's a couple of libraries added. But, uh, uh, yes, and... Zero programming experience is perfectly fine. Um, one of the first uh, assignments will be to get your feet wet. And that's all I'm asking, just feet wet. Uh, we will go through stuff in class, uh, you know, some of the, some very basics. I mean, not, not basic, the basic techniques, but we'll go through basic program programs. Um, the, the techniques I want you to pick up, uh, there's, a few uh, short uh, lessons to, to run through. Um, 
that that will get you there pretty quickly. Um, so uh, so yeah, homework assignments talked about that. Uh, there will be some, um, and you know we'll have uh, different different grading techniques. Uh, yes, we will talk about XG Boost. Um, That'll be like probably the ultimate of the statistical uh, techniques that we'll go through, but you know I want to build it up from you know the linear regression uh, all the way through that um, all the tree methods with examples. Uh, you know it's, we'll see how the the uh, accuracy goes up with with each of them. Talk about how to tune them. Um, and then there will be a final project with a proposal, probably like three weeks out from the end, um, that you will, uh, you, you know, you'll send me what you think is a good project to do and we'll chat about it and how, you know, whether, whether it's something uh, acceptable. And then a final submission, you know, toward the end. And we'll all share all this so that everybody can see you know, what kind of, uh, you know, what kind of projects so everybody else did. All right. <clears throat> so where's my water? Gotta keep my keep my voice going here. Awesome. Thanks, Monique. Uh, all right. So click here. Okay, so a little bit of the logistics on the schedule. Um, talking about 13 lectures, I counted it. Uh, that's not including Thanksgiving, but we're going, you know, right all the way right up to the week before Christmas. And depending on where I get with all of my material, uh, you know, or I might even add onto it after that, even if I finish all of my material here, because there's just so much. I mean, it's it's endless. You know, what what can be covered um, it will continue on um, after after Christmas starting in the new year um, so the first three lectures uh, will be free for everybody and um, that's what you signed up for uh, for this this group and uh, then I'll sign up another um, I'll, I'll add another 10 lectures after that and uh, twenty dollars a lecture after that, um, and then total one hundred fifty. And uh, if if that's a problem, we'll talk. You know, just uh, message me and uh, find me on LinkedIn or or wherever or to, or or here, and we'll figure that out. You know, I'm I'm not going to keep this from anybody because it's uh, it, it, you know I'm so passionate about it as you can tell. And you know, I want people to to grow. Uh, you know, and this this is just the field to be in. So, um, and as far as the DSDJ, the Data Science Dream Job, um, you sign up for that, you get everything for free for sure. Um, and also, uh, my company, uh, I never, I didn't mention that. I'm at, uh, I work at Cost Plus World Market, uh, which is owned by Bed Bath and Beyond, and uh, this grew up. This this idea grew from that, and uh, for, grew for out of, out of uh, a kind of started with a, um, a lunch and learn that our director was like, you know, he's he's like, ah, oh, it's really cool stuff you're doing there. You, you you're talking about, you know, can you show it, share it with IT? I'm like, oh sure, sure, because I you know I've been doing this stuff off offline. You know, taking classes, going to meetings, all that kind of thing. So, so I did that. So let's see. There's a couple of questions here. Uh, let me just jump on those real quick. Oh, okay. So, when cow? Yeah, great. Glad you're excited. Uh, that's Parik. Yes, glad you're excited. Um. All right, so get to the derivations and in intuitions. Yes, um, the derivations, 
I will talk about it at a high level. I will not go through all the math. Um, I just want to make it so that if you see the derivations, um, you'll be able to understand them, you know, at a high level. Um, if you know math, a lot of mathematics, uh, you know, all the calculus and stuff, then you'll be able to understand it for sure. You'll have seen it once, um, at least at a high level. Uh, intuitions, yes. Um, yeah, we'll talk about tuning models and stuff like that. I don't want to go too deep into that because that's, that's huge. Uh, but I'll make sure that I have um, plenty of, of uh, follow-up material because there's, there's tons out there. Uh, yes, DSCJ, you guys get everything for free, all the recordings for sure. Um, okay, the thought process for data science, yeah, uh, the pipeline, you know, that's, we'll, we'll definitely be doing that. That's, uh, that's the basis. You know, if you can't do that, then it's, it's kind of, you know, the, all the knowledge of models is not really that important. You got to know from going from the data all the way to, convincing you know people that what you did is is worth worthwhile so yes we will do that um okay and the same time every week yes this is the time uh 6 p.m pacific uh daylight time uh cpwm cost plus world market <laughs> thank you annie fill that in uh how to join DSDJ, uh, go to datasciencedreamjob.com. I'll just type that in here. Uh, and, you know, follow the bouncing ball, talk to Kyle, see if he has any specials. Sorry about that, Kyle. Um, Let's see. Okay, so your DSCJ and want to join here. Great. Uh, this is you've joined. I mean, you you join the class. You sign up for the class. That's it. Um, that's that's the joining. All right. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Oh. Um, I'll talk a little bit about how this evolved at my company real quick. Uh, it's something I met, I failed to mention, and if you've been on my website, you've kind of seen this. Um, when I was back at Georgia Tech, my professor there, uh, you know, the guy who I did my research for was uh, Dr. Gary May, uh, who he had just graduated from Berkeley, uh, you know, PhD in statistics. And, you know, he heard that neural networks were beating statistics, so he had me investigate that. So I did, uh, and, you know, indeed. Um, so, um, answering a question here. Um, so, um, so, yeah, and he moved up, uh, you know, I, I, I just did my master's you know, I didn't get my PhD from him, uh, just did my master's, graduated. Um, but he, afterwards, he moved up, you know, he became department chair uh, for EE, electrical engineering, then became the chair person for engineering there at Tech, which, you know, was huge. Then last year, he became, he became the chancellor of UC Davis. Uh, you know, which is like a huge deal. I mean, one of the use, one of the best DC institutions here. Uh, and I was just like, I was amazed at that. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I hadn't kept, kept, caught, kept in touch with him, but uh, I did go out to UC Davis a couple of times and met up with him at conference and, you know, uh, a, another big event um, and he remembered me um, and uh, you know, we chatted and you know, he's, I, he's super excited that uh, you know, that I'm into this stuff and you know, that have followed it, followed that research. And, you know, I, I was of course like astounded at his progress and it's just amazing. Um, and 
Uh, yes, Dr. Yes, Gary May, uh, Shreen Bus. Um, yeah, thank you, Manique, for uh, for posting that. Um, yes, that's his his website and you know he continued doing the neural networks and probably a third of the references for my work he he referred to it uh, wrote a book on uh, on it uh, on neural networks uh, applied to um, semiconductor manufacturing so uh, just completely amazing and uh, so um, so yeah, and and the guy that at my company at, at Cost Plus that uh, he was our director. He um, had went to Berkeley and he knew about Gary May. So um, so yeah, he he's like you know Chris, that's really cool. You need to talk about this. So I talked about it, and then you know eventually moved to uh, do this class. So so anyway. Um, just had to had to talk about that because it's just I mean the fact that his career was surrounded ar around you know the the beginnings of data science neural networks you know it's just it's it it's a testament to where this is going you know where it has come from. Um, okay, just a note here. Um, we're at six fifty, and I, I you know I planned on an hour and a half for this. Uh, you know, but I've I've got a lot of material here, so I'll we'll we'll move along. Um, and as such, uh, all of this will be recorded. It's being recorded. Uh, check the recording. Yes, it's still recording, and uh, will be available. It'll be up on YouTube, and I'll have links to it. Okay, so okay, so as far as my course goes. Um, actually, let me back up here. I had, there was a question. Um, prediction IO like universal recommender template example. Um, well, I will I will be talking about recommender recommenders um, recommendation engines. Uh, that's a you know that's one really big in my area uh, retail. So um, I you know I'm not I'm not familiar with prediction IO, um, but uh, but yeah I mean that can be an example we go through. It's you know just uh, I'll look it up afterwards. Um, so uh, so as far as how this class is going to go. Uh, the it's, there's two parts. There's part one, and then uh, an introduction, and then part two, which is the deeper dive. Big swimmer, you know. I love the water, so a lot of my language is around the, you know, getting down underwater. Uh, so um, purpose. That's kind of what we're talking about tonight. Uh, you know, our next lecture will be introduction to neural networks, um, kind of high level. We will not. Um, Go into details on that. You know, I'm giving people, you know, a couple of weeks um, to get through the the Python stuff. Um, we may start on it next week, um, but uh, but yeah, we'll the, actually the computing that's further along, um, computing for analytics, computing for machine learning. But uh, we'll go into some basic math math for machine learning. Uh, you know, not anything detail. We'll talk about some linear algebra, talk about some, you know, just basic calculus, you know, the, the stuff that, you know, you see, you know, I'll, I'll want you to understand the terms. And if you already have tons of math, then that's, you know, this will be just review for you. Uh, then we, when we get, in, uh, get into the, oh, that's it. Yeah, we'll get into the deeper dive. Um, that's when we'll start with, you know the from the most basic machine learning uh you know linear regression um uh, logistic regression all the way up through trees and then you know start talking about uh svms and uh statistical then then get into neural networks 
Um, that's where, uh, for me, it's the most exciting. But, uh, but yeah, you, you have to understand the statistical methods as well, um, trees, everything, uh, because that's where the language is these days, unless you get into like machine learning engineering, uh, which uh, you still have to understand the statistical stuff, but they're much more into neural networks, uh, parallel processing. So then we'll start with uh, a high level of the applications, uh, get into you know, the bigger applica algorithms, uh, deep learning. Uh, when we get there, uh, CNNs, RNNs, uh, you know, huge neural networks and uh, the applications there. Uh, and then uh, at the end, we'll get into just kind of generic projects, project applications. Uh, we'll talk about a lot of those. So uh, I have a more detailed uh, agenda um, syllabus for this class on my website. And uh, so if you need, if you would, if you want to look at that, please, by all means, do that. Um, yes, we will definitely be talking about NLP. Uh, extremely interesting to me. Talk about it a little bit of it tonight. Um, EM algorithms. Uh, what, what are the EM algorithms? Uh, Monique, can you refresh me? Uh, variational encoders, that's a little bit beyond this. Scans, you know, I've, I've heard enough about those. I want to talk about that. Expectation maximization, that's not something I'm familiar with yet. So I probably will be beyond, beyond this class. Uh, I really wanna you know, talk about a lot of the, the buildup uh, of these things, these uh, algorithms. And you know, we, that, that, that'll be a more advanced class. Okay. All right. So, what is artificial intelligence? Uh, Turing, back in 1950, defined it as mimicking human intelligence in computers. And it's pretty, pretty obvious. Uh, now, taking a step further, okay, how does that differ? How does artificial intelligence differ from traditional computing? Because Traditional computing is mimicking human intelligence computers. It's taking stuff that we do, our thought processes, and automating them. You know, that's, um, is that artificial intelligence? Probably back at that time, it, it was considered that because we were, you know, doing things with computers that people had to do. Uh, calculations, all that kind of thing. Um, data, you know, storage. You know, it's traditional computing, but, but it's not really artificial intelligence, uh, not the way we think of it today. Uh, traditional computing was transactional and, well, still is, I should say. Uh, it's, and, and uh, it's kind of like software 1.0, this traditional computing, and I, I should have put it this, put it this way. Um, but as everything, you did everything in one step at a time. You just, you wrote an algorithm and that algorithm was your process. And each process had a different algorithm. So, uh, you know, you, you, you defined what your procedure was, your process, you talked to the business, you looked at nature, you said, okay, this is how things work. I'm going to write a program to mimic that. And uh, very distinct code for each one. And everything, you know, in that case, uh, all your data is, it's everything stored with ones or zeros on or off. Um, you, you know, discrete mathematics. Uh, so artificial intelligence, the way we think of it these days, is more like taking a look at the brain. How does the brain work? Our physical brain. And you know, how do we do things better than computers? You know, computers may do things faster, but we are able to do many, many things better. Um, why can we do that? You know, so looking at breaking apart 
out the way we work and copy that uh, in, you know, in hardware. So uh, what are the things about us that's different? You know, we do things with a very massively parallel, very simple processor, the neuron. Uh, everything is analog. It's not digital on or off. Um, there's definitely digital aspects to it. Uh, the output of a neuron uh, is either like on or off, excited or not. Um, and that's a key part of the, trend, the, the communication between neurons. Uh, but um, it's still an analog process. It's chemicals, it's, uh, it is electricity, but uh, it's not um, these transistors that are just, the output is on or off. Um, it's sending out a signal. And also, in traditional computing, you know, your output is either right or wrong. Uh, you, everything is one or zero. Um, you know, everything is distinct. Whereas the way our brain works is, you know, we're imperfect. We have this, uh, you know, we can estimate things, we can guess. And even though we're not right all the time, we're still darn good. Uh, we don't have to be because there's this 80-20 rule or 99-1 rule, where as long as you're very, very close, you're good enough. And so if we develop this in, you know, in hardware and we in a robot or something, you know, in the computer, and it's not right all the time, is that okay? Is that good enough? And many people don't think that it is. Um, like for instance, that, that car accident down in Arizona in Phoenix, uh, Uber car that, you know, hit somebody on a bike. You know, just because, you know, that was an automated car, it's, you know, if it was a driver, you know, it, 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 if it was a computer, it should be perfect. You know, that's the expectation. Um, but it, it won't and it will never be. Um, you know, and it's not supposed to be. That's not the way we do neural networks. That's not the way we work. We're trying to copy that. It's just that if that, if it's 99.99% right, and wrong, you know, one out of 10,000, is that okay? You know, that's, that's the goal. And as we go along, we're gonna see that's where we're getting, where we're going with this is we're trying to get 99% right with estimates. Um, and then if that's uh, good enough, if it's there, then you know, we've succeeded um, because otherwise, it, it just would not have, uh, you know, would not have happened. Um, too, too complicated to, to, to develop this with traditional computing. We can do so much more. And you know, the key is the, the common architecture. I mean, if we do everything with neural networks, if we solve it, all of these problems with neural, that's made up of neurons and they're all the same. And so we're solving a problem with uh, a visual vision problem, you know, uh, NLP, you know, language, language, you know, listening, or a retail problem, trying to predict something, uh, you know, supply chain problem, all with the same code, the same program, uh, just a different set of data coming to, to train it with and some tuning. Uh, some some understanding of how neural networks work, uh, how big they should be, maybe, but it's all the same code, and you're just applying some uh, some trial and error to it to see how you can configure it, some configurations. So um, that is, that might be the most amazing part of this. Um, Yes, I will be covering time series forecasting. Yes, absolutely. Uh, that's, that's one of the most amazing things. Um, and I think we'll talk about that some. Okay, so uh, we kind of talked about this a little bit, uh, periods of artificial intelligence. Uh, you know, er early artificial intelligence kind of happened from, you know, we had this boom in the 70s up through 
you know, early 90s, uh, then kind of died off and picked back up in 2005 and became what it is today. Um, Hinton kind of got things going again in 2005 with his, his uh, stuff on CNNs, uh, which we're going to go through that. We're going to see his stuff. We're going to see, we're going to write programs. Everybody's going to be doing it themselves. And it's a big, big network. It's not small. Um, but we'll, we'll see the results. Everybody will have it on their own computer. Uh, data scientist, you know, that term really didn't exist before 2008. Uh, DJ Patel, who was under our last administration, our um, chief data scientist, and Hammerbacher back in 2008, who was at Facebook, coined that term data scientist. Uh, you know, that really kind of took off at that time. Uh, that's when people were being hired as data scientists. It wasn't until then. Before that, it was data analytics, perhaps. <clears throat> uh, yes, we'll be doing CNN from scratch. I will we'll be developing it up from scratch. <clears throat> it's not that complicated. Okay, so uh, we kind of covered all this already. <clears throat> so here's a graphic of uh, deep learning. Uh, actually, this is artificial intelligence, I would say, um, building up deep learning. Um, <clears throat> neural networks, you know, the very first neural nets were talked about in 1943, a model of how the neuron works was developed back then. Uh, you had a perceptron right off the bat. Um, which is just one neuron, and you know that was uh, defined. A few neurons together does the XOR problem, which we will be doing the XOR problem uh, sooner than later. Um, and at that point, they didn't know how to train the world neural networks yet. They had just figured out how to uh, use them, uh, how to configure them, uh, train them manually. Then they came up with backpropagation, the learning. And then now we have learning, you know, iterative, an iterative process of, you know, positive reinforcement. Um, actually, negative reinforcement. Um, trying to minimize an error. Uh, so moving along, uh, multi layer perceptron is. You know, that's I don't, the difference between that and backpropagation. You know, you're basically just having more neurons uh, with, with that. One. And then recursive neural nets came around that time, RNNs, which is a neuron, neural network that has a, an idea of the time state. Uh, looks like LSTMs came along that time, long short term memory neural networks. And we'll be developing these. We'll be we'll be looking at how these how these came about, um, and then new stuff you know, dropout is a big thing. Uh, new way that neural nets could be faster. Um, so, so yeah, here's this is kind of a give you an idea of how how long ago we started doing this. You know, I mean, machinery, computer computers really didn't come out to in like the 1950s with transistors. So uh, neural networks have been around since, you know, since computers got started. All right, so um, a little bit of history about the AI concepts, uh, early forms of artificial intelligence, fuzzy logic, genetic algorithms, and the statistical methods. Um, you can consider the statistical methods to be AI because it's learning. Um, the way you come up with statistical methods, you can develop them by the learning algorithms where they uh, iteratively get the answer. Um, then uh, neural networks, uh, that's, that's kind of, that's a more recent uh, excitement, uh, you know, but as I showed in the previous slide, it goes all the way back. Uh, perceptrons, backpropagation, uh, you know, we went, we went through this. Uh, there's a couple of links here that are very interesting to look at uh, on 
you know, where the, the, how AI came about. I hardly, I strongly suggest going back and looking at that. Okay, so the difference between artificial intelligence and machine learning. They're really very, very similar concepts, uh, looking at them from a definition. You know, we have an, an intelligence, you know, something that's smart, that's not, that's not real, so it's artificial, you know, it's not human. Um, but machine learning sounds a lot more, a lot less, a lot more techy and a lot less uh, kind of scary. You know, artificial, you know, that means it's not human. You know, it's like it's something else, uh, you know, something unknown. You know, we have this big fear of unknown. Artificial is, you know, not really well defined. It just means not real. Uh, intelligence, wow, that's smart if something's intelligent. So are machines smart? You know, I mean, maybe. Um, so, you know, we, we have a more palatable language today, you know, machine learning, uh, which instead of just artificial and unknown, we have defined it. It's a machine. Humans are better than machines, right? I mean, we all acknowledge that. We all think we are. So it makes us feel better to just say it's machine instead of artificial. And then instead of just intelligence, you know, we say learning. If, a, if we can get a machine to learn, that's a great thing. Intelligence also includes the other half of, uh, you know, knowledge base, which is, you know, knowledge, you know, starting with knowledge. So machines don't start, if it's learning, it doesn't start with knowledge, it learns, learns knowledge, and then eventually we'll have it, but not from the beginning, it only learns what you teach it. So, uh, you know, this, this is why machine learning is more the language these days than artificial intelligence. So here I've, here we talk about data science, the field that has burgeoned lately. Uh, okay, question of what is AI, not ML, you know, the, the knowledge pre, pre uh, the, 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 the knowledge before there's learning, I would say. And then also, also artificial intelligence, sometimes people think of like, uh, aliens as being artificial you know that's that's along those lines but ml that's not that's something we create so good question love good george tech guy uh question good questions um but uh okay so data science you know there's people have seen i'm sure a lot of you have seen these uh these venn diagrams uh, I, you know, this, the first one there that has in the middle of unicorn, it's, that's just a, a strong data scientist and it's hard, hard to find that. So, but it's a, it's a mixture. It's got computer science, you know, which is the engineering part, you know, the programming, sometimes hardware. Um, it's a mix between that, uh, math and statistics, which is the development of these models, the development of the learning techniques. Uh, you know, the ideas behind uh, the machine learning, uh, the learning algorithms, all that quote algorithms, but you have to program them. So that's where the computer science comes in. And then what do you do with all this, you know, stuff, you know, this is where probably is the weakest uh, part of data science these days, uh, the SME, the, you know, the business side of it you know how do you use this what how do you frame the questions um that you are going to apply this to and that's uh it's not easy um you really have to understand the business world you have to you, otherwise you're just programming in a vacuum and it's not really that exciting not that interesting uh Definitely nobody's going to pay for it. Um, well, that's not true. Um, there's pockets. You know, a, a lot of this stuff would never have been developed if there wasn't the use for it. There are applications of neural networks, the original ones, and still now that are 
that didn't really have an application to start with, not a strong one, I would say, uh, like uh, Vision, uh, you know, uh, um, recognizing numbers, recognizing characters, you know, that's, it was just neat that they could do that. Uh, the applications were not that deep, were not that complicated. Um, but uh, now the business world is just, has gotten an interest in all this. And all, you know, a lot of people that know a lot about the business world, you know, are, are jumping into it. And they may know some good math, you know, they, they may not be programmers, but, you know, they're learning enough to get by. And as you can see, there's overlaps in all of these. So if you have a computer guy who's good with math, you got the development of the techniques, which is the machine learning. Um, if you have math and you have the business world, then you have like analytics, uh, you know, your, your traditional, uh, traditional research or, you know, uh, applying these statistical models. Uh, to business, which is very popular, business intelligence, you know, that's, it's, it's big. Um, and then if you're, you got your programmers and your, your SMEs, uh, that's kind of more technical business intelligence, you know, the, the programmers, the developers um, that are, you know, old style. Um, that's not machine learning, though. That's just knowing the process and mimicking it in code. Uh, so, so yeah, I just threw it several of them there, there because a lot of people have different opinions and different wordings, but looking at these three, you'll get a good idea of, of, uh, what data science is like. Uh, this is a nice graphic of what today's data scientist looks like. I don't think they exactly dressed like that out here in the Bay Area, but maybe in Boston, New York, uh, here it's jeans and t-shirt, sometimes flip-flops. Um, but anyway, uh, so yeah, so here's, uh, this adds another piece on here. This is uh, Kate's, Kate's world. Uh, Kate Strashny is the, the visualization, and that's extremely important. If it's not grouped separately here, then that is, I would say it's under your domain knowledge and soft skills, but it's, it's becoming a world of its own it's, it's a way of getting more people involved, getting less technical people more excited about uh, data science. And so important. I mean, that's where the, it's the only way money's gonna be thrown at it. Uh, you know, it's, that's the way it's gonna grow. Uh, you, you know, people otherwise are just gonna program in a vacuum and nobody's ever really gonna take a look at it. But your executives, people controlling the money, are looking at graphs. They're looking at nice visualizations. And you gotta be able to, to communicate to them. So, um, extremely important. Um, okay, so, so yeah, this, a lot of this stuff is the same kind of thing we've talked about. Okay, so growth of machine learning and data science. If you notice here, Recently, uh, as of last year, machine learning has machine learning engineers have taken over data science uh, as the, the number one growth, and uh, that's it's incredible to me. Um, the people more applying these concepts, data science is still growing like crazy, six point five x from when from the beginning. You know that's uh, how much is growing. Um, and you know, like just big big data developers big here uh what else just looking at and this is overall all job markets you know if you look here there's stuff assurance or licensing realtor you know this is this is the life i mean um people aren't kidding when they say this is uh you know, th this is just going crazy right now. It's the, you know, this, the sexy job to be in right now because it's just, it's just growing. But here's some, I would say, kind of low as far as the numbers go, uh, at least, especially out here in the Bay Area. Uh, and up to three years. I mean, it's, 
it's really funny because you know you you don't need three years. This hasn't been around for three years. It hasn't been exciting. You know this this amount of excitement for three years. Uh, not definitely not. It's only been like five years. So if you're if you're moving from analytics into data science, then you may have been in it longer. But um, I mean, it's this is these are some really good numbers and. The numbers go way up higher than this. So I don't think there's anybody with nine plus years. Uh, well, I mean, very few. But th those kind of salaries are typical, the, 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 the nine plus year level. <clears throat> so what do you do as a data scientist? This here is probably one of the most uh, important slides, I would say. Uh, you, you, this breaks out your tasks between the three different areas, between engineering slash programming, computer, computer guy, to math, statistics, you know, your scientistic, scientistic, scientist thought process, and then your business side, your domain knowledge. And what I said here is, as far as what uh, the all science, all data scientists do, the ones that say all, the ones that say few, only a few data scientists do, and they're probably more along the machine learning engineers. Uh, the one here I got the three asterisks by. We will do some of that in here. We will develop a couple of algorithms, especially the neural network. Um, from scratch, um, that and probably the uh, linear regression. Uh, just so you can see where this stuff comes from. Um, I'm not asking you to memorize it, but just you know, so you can see it and program program it. Uh, so data cleansing. Okay, all of this is about neural networks learning data. Learning, learning a pattern, and you feed it data from your system, from your problem that you're trying to answer. You feed it the data. You you format it in such a way that the neural network can learn it. Um, that's the that, that's one of the most important parts of being a data scientist. Unfortunately, I should say. That's busy work, perhaps. Um, it's a lot of SQL, Python. If you're not an SQL person, uh, R. There's that's you know one of the biggest things with R. Um, <clears throat> but that's a big part of the computing part of this. That's not that's traditional. That's that's pulling the data out of your system. Okay, and there's estimates of this being up to eighty percent of what you do. So if you have a team, this is where you'd want to get somebody who's more in the computing and have them pull do, do that part of it. Uh, so model algorithm programming, you know, creating the libraries, that's for a few people, like the machine learning experts. Um, incre you know, increasing the processing speed, making things run faster. That's another engineering task uh, that's, you know, huge these days. You know, there that's what has made data science be where that it is. Uh, otherwise it'd be back where I was in the 90s, you know, not able to do very much. Uh, because it would just take too long to train your out, train your neural network, train your your algorithm, train your model. So uh, but you know, there's a few people out there that are doing this, and these are our leaders. You know, they're the ones making it possible. They're the ones that are, uh, you know, just blowing all us all away with our, their mentality levels. Um, I'm just, there are, there are gods. Um, so it's, 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 that's amazing stuff. Um, okay, pipeline development. This we will do a lot of. Uh, you know, very exciting. Um, this is where a data scientist lives is starting with the data, ending with the problem being solved, being, uh, you know, to a point where you have 
results that you can show and explain to the business, to the person that gave you the problem, uh, to your executives. So there's a lot in between. Um, a lot of, you know, this other stuff, the data exploration, feature engineering, the rest of these things and the mathematics statistics is in that, in the data cleansing, you know, all that, all those are steps in your pipeline development, but that's code, you know, so that's why it's under engineering. Uh, you just have to be able to piece together code, uh, you know, to, to do that. Um, it's not necessarily complicated code. It's more of like your, your scripting, I would say. <clears throat> so, uh, okay, the mathematics scientific part, uh, a statistical part of this. Uh, when you have your data, you need to be able to put it in a form that your model can develop. So that's, uh, it can, can be trained on. And that's where you're, uh, you're doing some exploration of feature engineering. And this is, besides picking your, your model, this is the most important part of, of your pipeline is, is understanding your data, uh, breaking it apart, all the, all the pieces of your data, all the columns, how many, all the records, cleaning it, simplifying it, explaining it, um that's this part the data exploration feature engineering uh model verification comparison that's where once you you know you've gotten your data in a certain form then you apply your models and compare them uh, through some mathematical techniques uh okay and then okay then there's these geniuses out there that are uh, putting together these models, creating the models from scratch, um, or just adding two models that are out there to come up with you know, something that's more accurate, faster. Um, so, so that's something that you don't have to do um, and, as a data scientist, uh, but you know, you're, you're involved with that. And then there's the domain knowledge, which, um, as your business end of it, your definition, your problem, you know, why am I doing this? You know, what, what, what am I trying to accomplish? And then, uh, you know, just your support, you know, and visualization is also a big part of your data exploration, feature engineering, make, you know, pictures worth a thousand words. Well, this is where you can do that. Okay. And here, this is uh, something Patil said a few years ago uh, that, you know, you're sometimes what you end up doing as a data scientist, 80% of the time is, is getting your data ready. Um, and I think this probably also should include the feature engineering um, because that's also part of preparing your data for the model. So in that sense, yeah, it would make sense if, if you're spending this much time, this much time getting your data ready, um, you, you got to hire somebody for that because it's, it's, it's more busy work. It's good development, good programming work. I love programming, but it's not the part that really is, is the genius part. <clears throat> more, it's more traditional. Uh, here's kind of a, graphics some a couple of graphics of where uh, data science or machine learning uh, how it developed over the years um, mid 1980s it had a big peak and it could be because of the book 1984 uh, or actually once 1984 passed and we realized we weren't quite there yet um, then it took a dive uh, but anyway sorry um, but yeah, it, it's, it, you can see that, you know, beginning 1990s, according to this, it was, you know, our, at a slow point and then slowly picked up. Um, so, you know, that's kind of what, what, I, where I was saying that it wasn't, uh, you know, I, I got out of it. Um, I didn't really know that, that it was going to die, but, um, not really die, but 
you know, really slow down a lot. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, then it picked up after, after a bit. Um, and then here's, here's a, an evidence of that, uh, attendance at the national conference on artificial intelligence, you know, it peaked in 1986 and, and took a nosedive. I wonder what it did after 2002. I'll have to check that out. Um, and these two are from this article, uh, that I have a link here for. Um, but, uh, but yeah, there's, as far as applications go, <clears throat> um, early applications uh, for this, um, let me see here, because we're, we're at an hour and a half, and thinking probably we're at a saturation point. Um, time is it? Yeah. Wondering if we should start getting into the applications next time, because um, I know in my head, and, and I know this is kind of a fire hose. I'm I'm throwing this at everybody, you know, as as quickly as I can. Um, but you know, there's just there's just a lot, and I feel like uh, yeah, you know, I can tell in my voice that enthusiasm is waning a little bit. So I think what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to kind of cut it off at this point, and uh, let's jump to the homework. Uh, this ought to get people's enthusiasm back up. Um, all right, so, uh, you know, I'll, I'll cut this uh, lecture down to just those, just the slides I went through and add the rest of them to next time. Um, but what I want everybody to do between, you know, starting now, and I'm going to give everybody two weeks to do this. Um, if you don't have it already, um, I want you to get out there and set up a GitHub and Git, because there's going to be homework that we're going to go through in class, and then uh, there'll be homework that I'm going to have, well, actually programming that we're going to go through in class, and then you're going to be doing stuff at home. And everything we do, I want, especially if you're a beginner and you don't have GitHub, I want you to put it out there. Um, the, uh, if you already have GitHub and you're not really interested in adding some of this, you know, what might be uh, somewhat uh, pedagogical stuff, um, yeah, that's we'll we'll have to figure that out. Um, I don't know if you have um, if you have a, uh, a private uh, share. Um, maybe you can add it under that um, and just share that with with the people in in the class, or share it with me um, if you don't want to share it with the class. Um, but uh, but yeah, let's uh, let's do that. Um, I mean, just this is this is going to be great for 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 all of you, especially especially the ones that don't have GitHub. Uh, and I I threw some guides out here to get you started with GitHub. The first one probably is enough. Um, I, you know, um, I forget which one is was the best one, but just take a look at all all, all of them. Um, they don't take long. GitHub is not hard. It's there's probably six or seven commands at the most that you'll ever use. A couple of them you use once. So <clears throat> um, set up LinkedIn if you don't have that already. I'm assuming you do. Uh, something I'm going to send out after this uh, mentioned before is a shared uh, Google Sheet that I want you to put your Git LinkedIn on. That everybody can connect. Um, this is huge for anybody that wants to get in this field. Is connecting. So, um, so yeah, that's that's going to be very very important. So if you don't have one, create it. If you need my help, if you want me to go over it, reach out to me, Kyle, Randy. Uh, it will all help with that. Very excited for that. Okay, and at some point, you know, once you've got your GitHub, load Python on your, on your 
laptop and or Mac and or Linux. Uh, doesn't take long. Um, definitely do Python 3. Uh, you might also want to do 2. Um, there's a lot of code out there that's just in 2. Um, and there's ways of do, dealing with the environment if you're concerned about that uh, and you need help, let me know. <clears throat> but uh, but then after that, uh, there's a couple of interactive courses to go through. Um, that first one's really simple. Uh, I'm going to add a couple more to this uh, for you in case you want to pick that those to go through. Take a glance, see what you think. These are all free. Um, okay, a couple of questions. Uh, how many hours do I expect outside of the class? I am going to hope it's not more than four. Uh, you know, but if you've got more time, believe me, there's a lot more to do. I can I can help with that. Um, so hopefully that's not too much. Um, if it is just let me know, and we'll figure out how to how to moderate that. Uh, will I be sharing the links? Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, I'll be sharing the this lecture, and the links will be in it. Um, what I can do maybe is have a summary of the links. Uh, so yeah, that's something I can do. Um, soft copy of this lecture will be on my website. I will after this, I will send out a link. Uh, to that, I will send out something else to all the whole group um, with links to this, with links to the recorded version of the lecture, um, links to the uh, the shared spreadsheet, uh, just uh, everything that we need. Um, okay, which IDE is best for Python? What I'm going to use in here is notebook uh, jupyter notebook and that's what i want you to use um as far as what i use personally i use jupyter notebook or just python directly from a command line i have atom i have py charm uh but i use those just with classes if that's what they were re requiring um i'm just more of a notebook person it's just Great for sharing. Great for this type of work. Um, you know, might not be great for production projects. So, but uh, yeah. So anyway, um, are we going to use three point seven version or an earlier version? Um, I'll be using. I think I've got three point seven. Um, Hold on, I'll tell you what I have. And it's, if it's not the latest, it's close to that. Um, I've, oh, I've got 3.6.5. So I will be upgrading. But I mean, the code that I, that I will be using uh, will, will work with, I'm sure, any version of 3. Um, if not, you know, then I, I would suggest upgrading. Um, I'll make sure I'm on the latest. Um, so, um, yeah. So those are those are my answers to all the questions. Um, okay, we'll one more question out here under Q and A. Kind of like this uh, under the chat doing the questions. Uh, soft copy of the homework. Uh, yes. As the homework is in the lecture, it will be there, but I can split that out. Uh, let me add these to my list here, a couple of things. So separate out um, homework and the links. OK, those are some, some to-dos. So. Uh, if there's any other questions, um, so just in general, maybe I can get uh, some 
for somebody some some notes out to the chat um, of suggestions and or how you know whether you thought this was you know right up your alley uh, you know it, it's not uh, you know not where you thought not what you thought it was going to be please react reach out to me if you don't post it out here but you know I, I would definitely love to hear um, you know, any, any responses, any uh, uh, suggestions, um, you know, chat or any more questions. Um, so I'll answer that one so there's no pain chats. Uh, but yeah, um, other than that, I guess we'll reconvene next week um, at 6 p.m. Uh, we'll get started a little quicker. Uh, we won't need to go through the intros, so we'll be able to get through more material. That took about 15 minutes. Um, I really appreciate that people were here early, um, and uh, you know, definitely get on there and fill out the uh, the, the uh, Google Sheet. Um, that's going to be key to how how we work this, how we get through it. Um, so that if there's no other comments, questions, you know, I'll leave this open here. Um, I'll go ahead and shut down the video, but I'll leave it open for people to continue asking questions after probably about 10 minutes. Um, I'll shut it down, but, but yeah, I'll, uh, I appreciate all your time and attention. You know, this is very important to a lot of people, very important to me. And we'll keep it going. All right. Cheers. Thank you all.